So why drill directional wells? Uh, site tracking or performance situations where drilling uh, cannot be continued due to a fish in hole or to explore a different area or to make multiple producing wells from the main well bore. Uh, the, 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 the main problem in uh, you know, uh, requirements of directional well is that, for example, if you have an urban area, you have a railway system, you have a difficult terrain, as you can see in the image, they're considered an inaccessible location. And with that, uh, you might uh, find it difficult uh, to drill vertically because you are uh, already got buildings or you've got some river or anything like that. You know, that is not where you, it's not possible to locate a ring. So then you have to drill a directional way. And then uh, sometimes we may have a salt dome. The salt formations are uh, uh, considered to be natural. Uh, you know, traps for hydrocarbons uh, because they act as a cap rock, you know. Uh, and there are several uh, building problems associated with salt dome. So sometimes it is required to avoid the salt dome. And as you can see in the image, instead of drilling vertically through the salt dome, in this situation, it has been decided to drill from the side of the salt dome into the hydrocarbon uh, reserv uh, hydrocarbon uh, reservoir. So uh, essentially, uh, every effort is made to avoid uh, drilling through the salt dome. But there are cases where we have to drill through the salt dome and uh, make sure that, uh, you know, you reach the target. So we do drill through salt but it is considered to be very challenging. Uh, sometimes it's uh, also called uh, as fault control where you need to control uh, the well and avoid drilling through fault. Again, fault uh, can cause huge problems, you know. Uh, they are uh, usually, you know, suddenly there is a change in the pressure regime and it is not possible to control uh, the well in such situations. So there are cases where we need to avoid uh, drilling through the fault. So you drill from the side and into the reservoir directly as can be seen in schematic. Uh, onshore to sea, sometimes if, you, uh, if it is not possible to get an offshore rig or it is uh, easier to drill from onshore, then uh, then it is considered to be cost-saving technique you know, to drill uh, from an onshore location. So you locate your rig on an onshore location near the sea and then drill a deviated well. You know, as, as it can be seen, there are numerous, numerous cases like this where we drill from an onshore location. So multilateral wells, you know, enables uh, numerous lakes. You can, you can, uh, you can drill multiple uh, from the same motherboard, you drill various different uh, laterals into different target reservoirs. So the advantage of this is that you save on the number of uh, you know wells. So on the same well, you can produce from different layers, and as one layer depletes, you transfer your production to the other layer. So you save cost on the drilling. The drilling cost, as you know, is quite high. This multi-layer well, multi-layer uh, wells the technology is quite complex. It is in use, but uh, it still requires a uh, higher precision in terms of directional drilling capabilities. But to say that uh, it is not possible will be a hard statement. Multilateral wells are being drilled, you know? but people, because of the complexity, they generally avoid drilling it. But I've been involved in multilateral wells in Saudi Arabia myself, so uh, it was done pretty you know, smoothly. Now, uh, this is an offshore well where you have a slot, and from there you drill uh, from the platform. Uh, you have a platform rig, and you drill multiple wells from the same platform. In shallow waters, this is a very common practice in offshore shallow water drilling, uh, where uh, you have a platform and you have a uh, you have one one uh, template from where you drill multiple wells. Uh, there also you need directional drilling, obviously, because you need to drill in different directions. You cannot drill in the same direction. Now, the directional drilling becomes more complicated in such situations because uh, there is an issue of collision. Collision meaning uh, you might end up, uh, if there is a minor error in your uh, coordinate system or in your measurement, which we'll talk about uh, a little later today, uh, then uh, you can collide into another well. And so you, in this kind of situations, you need to do anti-collision studies. So this is also in the scope of directional drilling. Uh, you know, a, a directional drilling professional needs to run some modeling and uh, do anti-collision analysis and uh, uh, let the company know how close you would be getting to another well, which may be a producing well. And imagine if you drill into a producing well, it can be a disaster. In this image, there is a blowout. The well is blowing. And uh, there is no way you can control this well from surface because there is a lot of fire. So you drill a deviated well and very precisely you intersect this well at certain depth in the high pressure zone as can be seen in this image and then you pump heavy mud and cement into this well there is a process involved in that relief well drilling is a very complex process it's a very challenging and uh, uh, highly uh, uh, competitive uh, business uh, or area of work so relief well drilling and planning is, is and then uh, because it, uh, you are typically dealing with very precise uh, tolerances and uh, higher pressures and all that but you need to do that and it is done routinely in case if uh, you lose control of the well and uh, you need to uh, kill a well, uh, a blowing well, uh, then you need to drill uh, a relief value. The example of relief wells are uh, Mokondo, 
you know, in Gulf of Mexico, where we had a where we had a blowout uh, in BP. So they had to build a relief well, and eventually the well that blowing well was capped after several months. I think one or two months using a relief well. Uh, and then the, this is how it is basically killed. Uh, it takes a few months, sometimes more than a month to kill. The other uh, type of application of directional wells is SAGD wells. This you may or may not have heard, but this is a enhanced oil recovery technique called SAGD. So this is steam assisted gravity drainage. Uh, it's a part of enhanced oil recovery technology and where you have heavy oil and vitamin, uh, this form of uh, uh, wells are drilled, where you uh, drill two wells uh, parallel side by side, as can be seen. And uh, it is an, uh, you know, it's uh, also called as, you know, steam stimulation in which a uh, horizontal parallel is drilled and oil is over and one other, uh, one uh, is drilled uh, like, so basically the distance between the two is about a few meters. Uh, and uh, the high pressure steam is injected in one well, uh, basically the upper well, and um, this causes the heavy oil to become mobile and then flow in the lower well. This is a very advanced technique uh, uh, that is used nowadays uh, as part of an oil recovery uh, method. And uh, I encourage all of you to uh, kind of read about this and do some research. A lot of work is being done in this area. So what are the different types of directional wells? So there are different types of directional wells. One is build and hold, build, hold and drop, so continuous build, and then you have horizontal wells. So there are three, four types of profile that are available. Uh, and uh, so what are the requirements of uh, directional wells? You, there are some preliminary requirements. And the first thing that you need is a deflection tool uh, in which you can actually change uh, the path of the well from horizontal to vertical. Now, uh, as you can see here, uh, you need a, some kind of a tool in your bottom assembly that will cause your well to deviate you know, at a certain depth. And you need to orient it in a particular way. So different tools that have been used by the industry, deflection tools that are used uh, that can cause a drill bit to deviate, uh, followed by, uh, to follow, uh, you know, like follow trajectory. Uh, there are wheel stocks, for example, there are jet pits, uh, oriented nozzle, there are downhole variable systems, and then there are conventional BHA hookups. Like you, you can you can have your BHA configured with your uh, stabilizers uh, in a way that when you apply certain weight on weight, the BHA will orient it one direction. So using stabilizer configuration, you can deviate. So there are some of the arrangements, but but the most popular ones is the downhole variable systems. That is the use of motors. The jet bit orientation and oriented nozzle is a old method and it's not very uh, successful or it's not very commonly used. Whip stocks are used in cased hole when you need to side track from inside the casing. Uh, in open holes, uh, uh, directional wells, most of the mostly most common application is variable systems where either you use a motor or you use a uh, you use a motor or you use a, a, a rotary variable system. So this is what the the whip stock is that I just spoke about. You know, as you can see here, uh, in case of uh, mainly used in case hole, and some of them some of them are iterable, some of them are permanent. So uh, you actually have a base and a, and a whip stock where you orient your tool inside the casing from where you want to uh, uh, where you want to deviate and then uh, you have your start assembly here a bridge plug which is set at a particular depth and then above that you start you have a mill, milling assembly here as it can be seen the milling assembly uh, will continue to drill and at a particular point it will sidetrack uh, in this case we have seen a watermelon mill no? and then you pull out this and go with the, another VHA So jet bit application in soft formation. Uh, sometimes if you have very soft formation, you can use this configuration where you plug one of the bits and uh, using other, uh, you know, just nozzle, uh, one of the nozzles open, you orient your, you know, direction, orient your BHA to the desired direction and you sidetrack the well. Uh, now, uh, the other uh, two uh, important are uh, important types of uh, systems are positive displacement motor, turbine motor, and then uh, then you have also rotary variable systems. So RSS uh, cause a, a deviating force against the side of the well bore to push the bit inward along the you know preset path. So it will move. It will cause the bit to move uh, in a predetermined direction. This is a very advanced form of uh, directional drilling, you, uh, and uh, you can actually change the direction of the well as you're drilling uh, by sending a command, which they call it as uh, downlink. But the most common ones are positive displacement motors. They're like this. They look up here like this. You have a uh, your stabilizer, your dump valve, your power section, your bent housing, and uh, you know your bearing housing, stabilizer, and then your pit. And here you see in your power section how you can have different configurations depending on your torque requirement, power requirement basically. So these are uh, this is how you need higher power 
like you have more uh, you know loops as they call here again today's session isn't in uh, an overview but we will have an opportunity to discuss all this in details in our course and uh, therefore uh, i would all encourage you to listen for the course it's a six day extensive course we will be discussing about uh, all these things in real great details and we will also do a number of calculations and uh, numericals and other things we have a uh, uh, we will have some assignments some quizzes and all that that will ensure that your fundamentals are very well built you know around direction drilling and you can take upon any sort of assignment you know in the future so normal normally in summary you know what are the requirements of directional well so normally you have a uh, downward circle systems and uh, measurement while drilling you have deflection tools you know higher hydraulics uh, you know you can generate higher hydraulics using a motor that can help uh, in better hole cleaning then uh, you need to do some engineering calculations for directional planning and we will come to that in the next uh, few uh, you know slides so the engineering planning and uh, all all of that is a uh, is a highly important part uh, you do uh, you make a plan you run simulations you make a plan you discuss with your customer as to whether the plan is uh, whether the trajectory that you have designed or built is suitable and can be used or if there are any issues then you have to go back and change your plan so these are the things that you do then you will select your dha what kind of bottom assembly you are going to use uh, the bottom assembly can change while you are drilling uh, while you are uh, through the course uh the bha should transfer the weight and this is a very uh, you know typical issue in uh, highly deviated wells where the weight is not transferred on the bit and as you know in most a lot of cases you need to have it on bit to drill so this is highly important and then uh, you need to have some other things like rubber protectors for drill strength to protect against the uh, wear of casing and drill pipe uh, you need hard binding of drill pipe sometimes and we'll discuss that in the future why we need because primarily in indirectional wells sometimes particular section of the well you might be uh, causing some casing and drill pipe friction and this can cause a uh, wear in the metal which is highly undesirable uh, so to prevent that from happening uh, hard binding is done and also rubber protectors are used uh, again uh, you need to add some uh, lubric lubricating additives to the drilling mud to reduce torque and drag in a deviated and uh, other the wells and uh, further down once you run the casing centralization of casing is very important Uh, in vertical wells, uh, it's important, of course, but in deviated well, it was more important because you want your casing to be in the center. You don't want it to be on the lower side of the well uh, because the casing, uh, the cement, uh, needs to be uniformly distributed around the casing uh, in order to ensure that it is a proper zonal isolation. The function of casing and cement is to isolate a zone. In the absence of uh, cement, uh, your casing might not get proper protection, and it can form some sort of a channel. between lower part of the wellbore to upper part of the wellbore behind the casing and if the cement is not there uh, in place this channel can uh, form leak paths and uh, compromise the integrity of the well so with that it is very important to have proper centralization and uh, this is one of the requirements of directional wells so let's uh, look at some of the basic terminologies uh, in the directional wells what you have is uh, what we call kick off point then you have a uh, build up section uh, then you have end of build You see in the diagram here, uh, different points of a well, uh, different terms are used. You know, then uh, you have a tangent section, then you have a start of drop section, then uh, then you actually have a drop section, then you have end of drop, uh, hold section, and then you have a target depth. So these are some of the terminologies that you will come across when you are discussing the directional well planning you know, or involved in directional well planning. And I, 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 you know, this course will help you get familiar with this because we will do a number of calculations going forward, uh, and uh, these calculations you will be calculating. Certain things that are associated with the directional wells. Also, uh, some other terms that you should be familiar with is uh, the two total vertical depth, the measured depth. You can see here in the in the image uh, where TVD is, is the vertical depth here, and uh, this is your TVD here. You have your turn rate, you have your build rate, uh, and this is your measured depth. The depth that the bit measures or the drill pipe, you know, along the course of the well is measured depth, whereas TVD is just the vertical depth from surface to bottom. there are two different things in uh, deviated wells and uh, one should be careful uh, with the uh, the depths in order to get the calculations right where is engineering calculation right so as you become familiar with these things uh, it's uh, not very difficult but in the beginning it's important to know which depth to consider while doing uh, certain calculations you also have your inclination and azimuth these are they are very uh, uh, very important measurements uh, when we do uh, when we do take surveys Uh, and uh, you see if you are following the right trajectory, turn rate, build rate, as I just spoke about. And then uh, azimuth, uh, you know, is in reference to something what is called as azimuth quadrant, where uh, you <coughs> you have uh, this quadrant and you measure your azimuth with reference to north, 
southeast west this this cord uh, this quadrant and then you you, know, you have your number azimuth value i mean <clears throat> So different uh, terms that are used is whole direction, and then <clears throat> there is also a, uh, uh, something that you should be familiar with is there are uh, two types of north. One is the magnetic north. All your measurements are with respect to north clock, and then there is the two north and the magnetic north. No? Uh, magnetic, and then the, the difference between them is called as magnetic relation. And uh, normally, all of the measurements are done with respect to magnetic north, and then they are changed to true north. Because in case if you use a different system, then it is to be available. Also, uh, if you see here, there is what is called as build rate that we just saw here in this diagram here. So this is the build rate at which, uh, uh, from your uh, vertical, how 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 you are building your angle. You know? And uh, then again, in that there are three categories: one is the long radius, medium radius, and short radius. So this depends. The range uh, of uh, build rate is, uh, is is divided into these three categories: long radius, medium radius, and short radius. Uh, let's talk a little bit about bottom assembly. Bottom assembly is very important in directional wells as, as it is in uh, vertical wells, but certain components change in the bottom assembly uh, uh, in uh, directional wells. And uh, they are uh, basically bottom assembly, uh, you know, they are, you have your uh, drill bit, you have your sub. So drill bit is, is the same as you would use in uh, in your vertical well. So not much change really in subs. There are multiple subs, type of subs, crossover sub, bit sub, etc. And in this, so they will typically have a typically have a uh, NRV mounted turn valve, which is used uh, to prevent any backflow and at the time of influx. Then you have drill collars. Again, drill collars. A large number of drill collars are used here in directional wells. You have non-magnetic drill collars. You have spiral drill collars. You have uh, normal drill collars, and you have square drill collars. So in directional wells, you use a large number of drill collars, different type of drill collars depending on your uh, requirement. And uh, you also have heavyweight drill pipe stabilizers. Uh, measurement while drilling, you know, there is MWD, commonly on logging while drilling, your mud motors, your drilling jars. So a number of things are used in uh, a deviated well uh, as part of the BHA. Then you also have uh, uh, stabilizers. I mentioned over here stabilizers. You can have hole openers, you can have reamers. So many different types of uh, components are used in a BHA. Uh, 